We've got Terry How and the football Terry. How you doing, Terry? Yeah, I'm good, mate. You? Oh, no. oh, what's up to you here? Oh, mate, I, I shaved it <laughs> off. <laughs> I was fighting the hairline for about three or four years. And then, yeah, I, I just thought, you know what? I was at home. It was looking terrible, brothers. Like microphone hair. I look like one of those horrible, scummy, like council kids that I grew up with. And then I was like, hey, I was off. I'm quite liking it, though. I, you know, it's nice. The freedom. I don't have to do it in the morning. I don't have to worry about what it looks like. It's good, mate. So you have to join the club. It, it, it actually suits you. It actually, at, at first, I was thinking, who's that? Hey, Terry. <laughs> I'm for the, like the Freddie Lundberg look is, is what I went for, but uh, <laughs> the, the Freddie, the Freddie, the recent Freddie Lundberg look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah. I'm not <laughs> not the one with the yeah, not, how's no, it going, bro? How's I, things been? Do you know what? It's, it's tough, isn't it? I think it, it's tough for everyone, but it's about putting life into uh, perspective. Really, you know, my, my family are all healthy. Uh, my work's still continuing. You know, I've, I, I live quite rurally so there's a lot of, I can go out for walks you know running so I, I've got it really good compared to loads of people so no complaints from me for being locked in for five weeks how about yourself oh it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> listen I'm the same as you listen I, I, I'm a person that I always try and look for the positives and you know the positives are is that we're all in good health and we're safe and like I keep saying since we've been doing this stream we ain't got to go out there and face this thing day in, day out. There's people doing it on, on our behalf. And that's the whole point of doing this stream today. So um, you know, um yeah, I'm I'm positive. I'm positive. I, I, I do miss the football. Um, I know you as a big Manchester United fan, um, and also a big football fan because you, you do your thing every week commentating um on football in general. You must be missing it as badly as I'm missing it. But yeah, we do miss the football, but right now there's some things more important than that. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. And I think in terms of the NHS and, and, and all the other key workers, the bus drivers, I mean, I, I, I've been to the supermarket a few times and I look at the cashiers and just think they're not risking their lives in the same way as the nurses, but they're still serving people face to face every day. I don't want to do that. And I'm in a very fortunate position where I don't. So everyone who's keeping this country ticking over right now. I, they've just done such an amazing job. And, and I'm someone who's so proud of the NHS. I remember during the London 2012 opening ceremony, where, where Danny Boyle celebrated it there. And I feel my friends were a little bit younger. They didn't quite get why. And I said, look, there, there'll be an incident at some point in the future where we, we realize how great the NHS is. And all I hope that happens after this is that the government, you know, and I don't really like getting political. They pump more money in, more units, more nurses, more hospitals, because you just want to be prepared better <clears throat> the next time something like this happens. And, you know, it could happen again. Who knows? Oh God, please not, please oh, not, yeah. man. I hope not. But you know, you've it's got like, to... like a nightmare at the moment. It really is like a nightmare at the moment. But listen, it is what it is. It's a situation that we're in. Um, Terry, um, as I said, big Manchester United fan. Um, United, have they turned the corner? Oh, mate, it's just been really nice about this period. I've had a time to reflect, and I made some content. I didn't release it because I embarrassed myself. Some of my reactions to our losses and draws earlier on in the season, where I'm scathing at Oli. And we, for me, I think we have. I think that I couldn't see the wood for the trees. Better quality players, better attitude. Bruno has almost been that 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 catalyst from an attacking point of view. And that those last 10, 11 games before the season finished, we just looked a completely different outfit. We, could, we only considered two goals and they were goalkeeping mistakes. Second best defensive <clears throat> in Europe in relation to clean sheets. So I, I think there has been a, a corner turn and there are big signs. Guillaume Balaguer coming out thinks Pogba's going to sign. Fabrizio Romano thinks we're going to get uh, Sancho. And I hope these things happen. As a man I was laughing at this comment here. The guy said, he goes, Terry lost his hair because Jaden Sancho ain't signing to you. Ain't going to United. <laughs> you know what? The, it, I, actually think, I, I had a thick head of hair when Fergie retired. <laughs> and now it's gone. So it, it, actually, I could. I might sue Man United for my my uh, for being frolicky challenged. But um <laughs> Yeah, I hope so. I hope that happens because for me, my 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 overarching thought is this on it. I don't know yet whether Oli's a good enough manager to make us Premier League champions or or, or Champions League winners again. I I don't know. The jury's out if he's a good enough coach. I still think we need him for another mm. twelve to eighteen months to settle the ship and to reinstill the culture we need. And we got some massive news this week. The best news since Fergie retired that Woodward and Matt Judge, who 
they're brilliant commercially, are no longer involved in football making decisions around buying players and haven't been since the summer. And that's why all of our signings, including the guy everybody laughed at on deadline day in um, Igalo, have all been relatively speaking, successful. So I just want to keep this ship moving in this direction. No changing of management in the summer. Don't rock the boat. You know, you know, you know, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush kind of thing. But yeah, I'm feeling really positive. That's why I'm desperate. I know a lot of Man United fans want the season cancelled and voided because get one over on Liverpool. For, for me personally, I'm desperate for it to come back because we were on a really good run. And I think with Rashi coming back and Pogba coming back into this team, we could make top four. Mm. And we could win a trophy. And, and that's more important to me than seeing Liverpool having a title, for me, wrongfully taken away from them. Does does Pogba really want to stay? Or is it just because of now, because of all what's gone on, that move that he wants probably ain't going to be there. So now all of it, because his agent has been coming out and saying a lot of things for a lot of months. Yeah. And Pogba's never really once sort of come out and said, Yo, shut up, man. You know what I mean? Let, let, yeah, I mean, he, he's let it roll sort of thing. So do you think he really wants to be there or do you think that he sort of resigned himself to the fact that, you know, I'm not really going to be going nowhere? Do you know what? I said I did a stream this morning and honestly, my opinion changes every day. You read one report, you read another. The one thing that I saw a few YouTubers talking about the other day made sense is that Man United have released a lot of pro Pogba, a, a podcast they filmed six weeks ago. They had no reason to release it, but they did. Lots of tweets about him, talking about him a lot, a lot of almost propaganda. So there is this feeling amongst Man United fans, are they setting us up for some really good news? You may also find, like you said, he might end up staying by default in terms of the, the, maybe the big club that were after them. They're not going to have the money now because of Corona and he has to stay. Um, you just hope then that he pulls his socks up and and, and behaves in the right way. But I, one thing I like about Oli, I don't think Oli would allow him to be involved if he was genuinely... I, I, all this nonsense that Jose came out of about being a virus. I, I think that's what he, I don't think he's a bad guy in that way. We know what Mino Raiola is. We know what he's about as a person. And I don't really want to do business with him. But Paul Pogba is the best midfielder in the world. And if you can keep him, we should. In the world? In the world. No doubt in my mind. He, he's... Not quite- not according to uh, Graham Sooners, he ain't. Ha! <laughs> yeah, well, we know, you know, honestly, bruv, I don't listen to anyone who votes BMP, bruv. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, ain't nothing. <laughs> I hear what that old man has got to say. Do you know I mean, what I mean? That's, that's been a real, that's been a, um, a real tussle, isn't it? Um, does he, um, do, do you think Graham Sooners unfairly singles out Pogba? A hundred. Yeah. Pogba, come on, let's, let's be have it right now, right? Pogba, he, he's let United down. He's hardly, we know he's been injured, but it's just, I don't know, this is something that ain't been right. And as I said, then you've had the agent on top of that and stuff like that. So is Graham Sooners being unfair when he tears into Pogba? Massively unfair. I look at it very much the other way around. I think Paul Pogba has been let down by Manchester United since he rejoined. Wrong choice of management, poor signings, terrible decisions from top to bottom, the club falling apart internally. Pogba, I think of him as a, a luxury player in the sense of I don't want him wasting his time running around tracking. I don't mind Pogba playing a holding role if he's got creative players in front of him, like when he plays for France. If he sits in the double pivot for France, look who he's got in front of him. There's no pressure. At Man United, we sit him in a defensive role and then kick off and get angry that he's not creating chances. Well, if he goes forward and does that, there's no one to cover that position. He's just, for me, been hung out to dry by the club and poor recruitment. I'm excited mm-hmm. to see him in suddenly in the team with Fred playing brilliantly with, with, with the maestro Bruno Fernandes, who has just been sensational since he joined. I think he's in the last 18 months, he has a, he has a 95% ratio of goal contributions to games in, across both leagues. Phenomenal. I think you'll see the very best of Pogba. I don't, I want Pogba to almost be like our Messi or our Zidane. I don't want him to worry about tracking, you know, Mark, looking after Mark Noble in a game away at West Ham. I want him to think I'm just going to be here to pick up the ball be creative, show you my flair, and 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 be the, the brilliant Paul Pogba we know he can be. I don't want him to try and be Yaya Toure or Patrick Vieira. I don't think that's his game. I think he's more the creator. And, you know, you never hear anyone saying, oh, Kevin De Buen don't do a lot of tracking back, does he? He doesn't, like, hurry a man and crunch into a tackle because he doesn't need to. He's got a team around him to do that. So I, I get the criticism of Pogba, and there is some fair criticism of him. Graham Souness, completely over the top. And, and Monday, Tuesday's issue was brilliant because... Pogba didn't even say he doesn't know who he is. 
He says, I don't know what he looks like. I know he was a great player, but I basically wouldn't know him if I bumped into him. And the Sunes took the bait. Sunes was so angry that he didn't know who he was. I'll oh, put your medals on the table and all this nonsense. And it's like, listen, that shows you there's a, there's bad blood there because we all criticize people. But if, you know, you don't take it that personally, you don't get that angry. And yeah, Sunes needs to calm down a little bit. When he said put your medals on the table, he can't, of course, put a World Cup medal on the table. And that's what you <laughs> laugh about. It. Um, but uh, T Mill says, hey, because you said Paul Pogba, probably the best, uh, well, you said best midfielder in the world. He said De Bruyne is the best midfielder. And he said, I'm a United fan. I think I you forgot about De Bruyne there. Well, we, best, you know, a lot of people having a go at you. They said, Pogba is, um, is the, oh, no, there's someone agreeing with you. Pogba is the best, if not one of the best in the world what one of the best well let's have it right he ain't done it he has not done it really since he's been at united has he be real he's done he's done it in he had a you, lot. you guys are a bit like us with Orville in the no it's in, not like okay he's so brilliant and we talk him up but be real he hasn't lived up to what you expected no i get that but it's about the, the team being together because you could take some of these brilliant Liverpool players right now. You could take Kevin De Bruyne right now. If you put him at Man United for the last four or five years with the mess that we've had, they're going to struggle. If you put Ozil in the last five years in a peak Arsenal team, he would have shone with those players around him. It's about systems and it's about teams collectively. For me, I'm quite happy for people to say Pogba was one of the best in the world. If they think De Bruyne's better, I, I don't care. That's great that you, you prefer the point. I just look at Paul Pogba. I've seen him play since he was 15 years old. And there's just something about this kid. And, you know, his performance in a World Cup final demonstrates what he can do in the right team and system. And, and we all know that, you know, we've, we've me and you have both seen our clubs play where we've had players of lesser ability. And I think of players in, in the Man United squad over the years who haven't been world class but they've achieved brilliance because they were in a, in, in a really good team. And what that then does is elevate our better players, you know. And, you know, would... Would uh, I look at Paul Scholes? We know how great he is. If he'd have been at Liverpool and Gerard would have been at Man United in the same era, Gerard would have won more trophies than Paul Scholes. It wouldn't have changed how good they were as individuals. But I think it's for me, it's more about the, the team that you sit within. And Pogba needs that uh, more than anybody else right now. All right. Well, Stevel said, brilliant from both AFTV and United Stand. And for everyone else who's got involved, and to guys like you, Terry, at all, expressions. All the guys from all the various channels that have come on today has been absolutely um, brilliant. I um, really appreciate it. Uh, this guy says Pogba is one of the best dancers in the world. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, isn't it? It's those little things around Pogba that's kind of when people start to criticise and that, you know. Yeah, I, I get that. I, I, for me, it's one of those things. I just is, is, he, is he focused? I mean, I saw Danny Mills this week saying, you know, too many air styles, too many this, too many that. Too many Mate. off field distractions. I was with my dad not not too long ago. My dad does after dinner speaking, and Paul Merson was there. Paul Merson told me a story about what him and Gaza used to do after training. They used to have this game where they would sit there with his with Paul Merson's brother and one of Gascoigne's friends, and they'd stick a grand each on the table after training. They'd pop every half an hour, they'd pop a sleeping tablet and down bottles of wine. And the person who stayed awake the longest, obviously the last one to fall asleep, won all the money. That's what those that's what that generation were doing in between games. For me. I'd much rather Pogba dance on Instagram than go to a bookies and put on bets, be drinking, be out chasing girls. You know, Pogba doesn't drink alcohol, doesn't eat bad foods, doesn't get involved in any kind of shenanigans. Like for me, dancing and dyeing your hair, these things are minor. When you think of Firmino at Liverpool caught drink driving, like what Ryan Giggs was doing his whole career, he was definitely distracted, like hiding things from his brother and wife. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, I just, I don't, I just don't pay any of that, any of that sort of stuff, real attention, mate. I just think it's, I think Pogba's focused. I think he wants to play, just needs that team around him, bro. So, so uh, this guy said, Graham Soonis, what he, the point he's making that Pogba's not prepared to do any of the dirty work. Yeah, but nor's Lionel Messi. I don't remember Zidane doing much dirty work. When I think about Man United, Cristiano Ronaldo didn't do anything dirty. And I know they're different positions, but it's that case of every team has someone like that who's not there to be a, you know, a grinder and a work hard. I remember Thierry Henry, when he first became a pundit, kicking off about Wayne Rooney. And he said, what frustrates him about Rooney is Rooney spends all game running around, wasting his energy. And then when he gets a chance in the 80th minute, he's knackered. He says, you just want to reserve it. Me, and, and it was like, what do you mean? He said, well, I didn't go around doing that. I, I played in this part of the pitch. I waited and I reserved my energy for my attacking parts of the game. You know, Thierry Henry weren't tracking man back, doing this, doing that. And I think that that's where we need to not judge Pogba. I don't think, I think because Pogba's really tall and he resembles maybe a, a, a Patrick Vieira type figure, it's, oh, he needs to play like Vieira. He's not. 
if he was smaller, shorter, mm. they, they would they would say, oh, no, he's a creative guy. It's fine. If you look more like David Silva than Patrick Vieira, I think people would view it different. It's like Lukaku. Everyone thought he was going to be his great target man because he was big. He, he had a his first touch was a pass. Like, but because he was tall and big, nobody looks at him as a baller. Doing all right now, though. He's doing all right, isn't he? He's scoring the goals. I honestly, I wouldn't take him back for free. He, he, he can't play the football we want. Mason Greenwood over him every day of the week. Okay, let me just before you go, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, your player of the season so far? Oh, I would go with Firmino. Firmino. Okay, all right. Okay. Flop of the season so far. Undombele. Some people did say Pogba earlier. Uh, yeah, we've been injured. Uh, for me, Undombele has to be. He come in, everyone was buzzing and gutted that their club didn't sign him. He's been awful. And he's got, I did, I was listening to expressions. Uh, did he, he blamed on a toothache. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When I heard him say that, I thought that Ty blaming the rain that time. Yeah. That, I, <laughs> right. I like, but blaming the toothache, uh, you know, um, it didn't, uh, I'll tell you, man, uh, that was, uh, oh my God. Yeah, I know you shouldn't even mention Lingard, though. I wouldn't say Lingard's a flop. Lingard's doing what I've expected of him. He is, again, he's just, I look at him as like a mod, different position, but you remember David May at Man United, right? Mm. He's there, he's back up. The problem is United have been so bad in the last five years, he's become a first teamer. Like, Lingard's just doing what Lingard does. I mean, I, I genuinely hope you guys don't sign him like I saw you were linked to him. That would just be the craziest, like, can you imagine? No, thanks. No, thanks. I like his character, but I, I, and I think he is having a tough time. I think he's better than what he's done um, this season, but nah. <laughs> Listen, Terry, appreciate you coming on, mate. Really, really appreciate it. Just before you go there, tell everybody about your channel. Yeah, if you want to come over and check us out, we're the Football Terrace. Um, the only one named that uh, we do. We cover all the top six teams in the Premier League. Just launched their own Arsenal podcast actually this week. So I'll reach out, mate. We'll, like, nice to get you on there at some stage um, no to come across and do that. But tonight, most important thing, keep watching AFTV. Watch the United Stand. Biggest and the best to the pioneers of what we all do. So big shout to you guys for doing what you're doing for the NHS. Everyone dig deep. Give as much as you can. Uh, and thanks for having me on. It means the world to me. Thank you. The coronavirus has not just affected the world of football, but has affected everybody but you know what we can defeat it if you're displaying any of the symptoms always make sure that you self-isolate i know it's a terrible time but we will defeat the coronavirus we will be back